Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. It's Friday, September 18th. I'm Stephanie Haney. This is where we give you the top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Thanks for being here to get filled in on everything you need to know here in Northeast Ohio. And a very happy Friday afternoon to everyone joining us. Hope you had a wonderful week and you are looking at a great weekend. First up, we've got some interesting news out of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. The CDC has reversed course and gone back to previous guidance about COVID-19 testing. The CDC now says anyone who has been within six feet of someone who is tested positive for COVID-19 for at least 15 minutes should be tested. This is a change from what they posted last month in August that said people who didn't feel sick didn't need to get tested. Now, health officials never said why they made that change in August, but there was a lot of criticism from medical professionals outside of the CDC saying that this doesn't make sense with the information that we do know about COVID-19, how it can be transmitted among people who haven't yet shown symptoms. Some people speculated that this was a forced change put on the CDC by political appoint, appoint excuse me political appointees within President Donald Trump's administration. So now the CDC says anyone who has been within six feet of someone who has been documented to have COVID nineteen for at least fifteen minutes should get a test. Again, we don't know why they made that first change in August, but the CDC is saying that this was a clarification that was needed. The quote is, due to the significance of symptomatic, excuse me, asymptomatic and pre-symptomatic transition. So, CDC refers in course, now saying, again, if you've been in contact with anyone who has had COVID-19, who you believe had it while you were in contact with them, if you were in contact for at least 15 minutes, you need to get a COVID-19 test to stop the spread of COVID-19. Now let's take a look at the numbers out from the Ohio Department of Health. The numbers have maintained relatively consistent from yesterday. However, new cases are down just a bit more than the change in the other numbers. In the last 24 hours, we've seen 1,011 new reported cases of COVID-19. That's down from yesterday when there were 1,067 new reported cases of COVID-19 out from the Ohio Department of Health. That brings the total number of cases that we know about here in Ohio to now 142,596. The seven-day average positivity rating is 3.4%. That's down 0.1% from yesterday. Again, we are below that World Health Organization recommended threshold of 5%. So that means over the last seven days for all the COVID-19 tests that have been done, 3.4% have come back positive. Now, in the last 24 hours, there have been 28 new reported deaths. This is up slightly from yesterday when there were 25 new reported deaths. Earlier this week, we did see a very large number. We saw 87 new reported deaths at one point this week. But today, we are down to 28 new reported deaths. That total number, 4,608 people that we know of that have died related to COVID-19 here in Ohio. The total number of new hospitalizations, this is where we get into that more real-time data in the last 24 hours, is 62 new hospitalizations. And right now there are 634 people who are currently hospitalized being treated with COVID-19. 223 of those people are being treated in an intensive care unit right now. That's about 35% of all the people in the hospital. So just over one-third of all the people in the hospital are being treated in an ICU right now when it comes to people who are being treated for COVID-19. In the last 24 hours, we've seen 12 new ICU admissions. And in terms of the statewide hospital bed occupancy, the the percentage of our hospital beds that are being occupied right now for any reason, that's at 76%. So 24% of the hospital beds in the state are currently available for anyone who might need treatment. Now let's take a look at the national and the global numbers. These numbers come from Johns Hopkins University. As we've been looking at it this week, the U.S. is getting closer and closer to 200,000 deaths from COVID-19. Globally, unfortunately, we are now over 30 million reported cases of COVID-19 and very quickly approaching 1 million global deaths related to COVID-19. 
In the U.S., there are now 6,694,434 reported cases of COVID-19 dating back to when we first became aware of it here in the U.S. That's about 45,000 new reported cases in the last 24 hours in the U.S. That's a significant jump. And in terms of the number of deaths, we are now at 198,055. So that's about 830 new deaths in the last 24 hours. Now, if we think back just a moment, I know we hear these numbers every day and it can become kind of desensitizing. But if you remember back when we got those early estimates that there might be between 120,000 and 240,000 deaths related to COVID-19, that was shocking. That was very shocking to me to hear that number. And now here we are very, very close to 200,000 deaths at the rate that the deaths have been increasing each day. It's very possible that we might be there on Monday. So just take a moment to think about that. I know that we haven't had much time to grieve the deaths of COVID-19 here in the U.S. We've been sort of in this moment where we continue to learn about the numbers each day and try to keep up to date as best as possible. But that's a lot of people, almost 200,000 people here in the U.S. So just take a moment to let that sink in as we get very close to that number. And we know in the U.S. we've got 4.25% of the global population, but we have 21% of the known deaths and 22.1% now of the known cases. Globally, those cases now are over 30 million. It's 30,290,791 to be exact right now with the most up-to-date numbers from Johns Hopkins University. And in terms of the number of deaths globally, that's now at 947,000. 919. So if we take a look back to Monday, that's about 22,300 new deaths reported globally since Monday. So now we're just over 50,000 away from 1 million deaths. And at this rate, we could hit that number within two weeks. Just to give you a little bit of context of how things are looking in the larger picture when it comes to COVID-19, both nationally and globally. Now here back in Ohio, seven Ohio bars have been cited recently for violating COVID-19's alcohol curfew. Remember that order is in place. Governor Mike DeWine has said no alcohol sales after 10 p.m. in the state of Ohio. You have to have the drinks off the table by 11 p.m. Well, of the seven that have recently been cited, three of them are here in Northeast Ohio. That includes the Ivy, Rumors, and Showcase. All of these bars have violated Rule 80. That's the after-hour liquor sales portion of the rule that's regulating what liquor sales are happening here in Ohio right now. So the Ivy and Rumors are downtown. Showcase is in Garfield Heights. The other bars that have been included in those seven are the Pigskin Bar in Athens at Ohio University, my alma mater, also City Tap in Bowling Green, and Redneck Willies in Weston. Now the seventh bar not being cited for violating curfew, being cited for improper conduct and disorderly conduct, that's Brat House in Bowling Green. So now these cases will go to the Ohio Liquor Control Commission to see what kind of penalties they may face. It could include a fine. In the most severe situations, it is possible for a bar to lose its liquor license. So keep that in mind. Now, today, Friday, September 18th, we are now 46 days out from the election. And our voter registration deadline here in Ohio is October 5th. So there are only 17 days left to register to vote in Ohio. You can do that online. You can do it online as long as you have an Ohio driver's license and your social security number. I tweeted that link out earlier. You can find that at underscore Stephanie Haney. But here's a reminder, if you don't have internet access or if you would simply prefer to do it in person, there is an event called National Voter Registration Day. That's happening next Tuesday, September 22nd. That will be at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, which will also be a polling place this year for the election. You don't need to live downtown in order to go register to vote at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse on Tuesday. That'll be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And keep that in mind mark that on your calendar if you would prefer to register to vote in person. If you're looking for a job, Amazon is hiring in the Akron area. They're hiring more than 1,500 jobs right now. This is for the brand new fulfillment center that is where Rolling Acres Mall used to be. So the starting pay for these jobs is $15 an hour. Here's something important to note. Benefits will be available on day one to people who do get hired. You need to be 18 years 
or older, and you need to have either a high school diploma or the equivalent, so your GED if you didn't get a high school diploma. So the jobs will be available on a rolling basis. Amazon is hiring right now. They do expect those jobs to fill quickly. We have the link if you would like to apply on WKYC.com and also in our WKYC app. Amazon is on a hiring spree right now. They announced earlier this week that they're hiring another 100,000 workers throughout the U.S. and Canada in order to manage the massive increase in online shopping that's happened because people have been doing more online shopping because they're going out less with all of the restrictions related to COVID-19, so on and so forth. That also includes about 2,400 jobs in the Cleveland area. So again, that link, if you're interested in applying, that's on WKYC.com. Here's something else we want you to know about. The Lake County Humane Society is looking for help for a dog that was recently rescued. The dog's name is Stevie, and when she was rescued, she had about six puppies with her, and she had heartworm. She still has heartworm and needs to be treated for that. Well, they couldn't treat Stevie right away because she was still feeding her puppies, but now her puppies have been adopted. Just to tell you a little bit about the backstory of how Stevie was found. She was found outside in 90 degree weather she was very tired dehydrated very skinny still taking care of her puppies well those puppies are okay they've grown up they've been adopted and now it's time for stevie to be treated but being treated for heartworm is very expensive it can be more than fifteen hundred dollars and in order to keep the animal safe while being treated for heartworm there's a lot of crate rest involved. So this actually takes a person to really be with the animal, make sure that they're not exercising too much, those kinds of things, painful injections. It's a lot. And it costs about $1,500. So the Humane Society is looking for donations. If you would like to donate, we have that linked on WKYC.com and the WKYC app as well. And if you would like, you can also send an old-fashioned check. That address is also in the story. And the Lake County Humane Society also wants to make a point to note that Stevie... She's about two years old, that's what they think. She spent most of her life living on a train, but she still has a very sweet and silly personality, and they say she deserves a chance at a really good home and a really good life. So if you're thinking about getting yourself a pet right now, a pandemic pet, as lots of people have called them, maybe Stevie is the right fit for you. You can check that out on our website and on our app. Now let's give you a preview of what the weekend looks like in sports. Of course, yesterday, the Browns beat the Bengals. Today is Victory Friday, so no Browns football game this weekend. They'll return next Sunday against the Washington football team at home. When it comes to Major League Baseball, the Tribe is taking on the Detroit Tigers. That's tonight, Saturday, and Sunday in Detroit. Right now, the Tribe is 7th in the American League, and the top 8 American League teams go to the playoffs. So they are in a good spot right now if they don't go on another long losing streak. So hopefully they make a good showing in Detroit this weekend. And as for the NBA playoffs, tonight the Denver, the Denver Nuggets take on the Los Angeles Lakers. This is Game 1 of the Western Conference Finals, so we're down to the Final Four teams. They will have Game 2 on Sunday. The Eastern Conference is a little further along. It's Game 3 this weekend. That's on Saturday between the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. Right now, Miami is up 2 to nothing in the series, and the first team to four will go on to the NBA Finals. So just getting started for the Lakers and the Nuggets, and the Heat and the Celtics are deep in it. Those games are happening this weekend. And tonight, we have our WKYC High School Football Game of the Week. It's the Hudson Explorers versus the Wadsworth Gridleys. Hudson is now 3-0. Wadsworth is 1-1. These are two of the most prolific offenses in the high school football area in Northeast Ohio. Both the Explorers and the Grizzlies are coming into the game averaging more than 50 points per game. So this should be a pretty high-scoring match tonight. Last year... Hudson beat out the Gridleys on a last-second field bowl. So Wadsworth will definitely be looking for payback tonight. It'll be hosted with coverage tonight by our Dave Dino Di Natale. Kickoff is at 7 p.m., so we'll have that on WKYC.com, on our WKYC app, on Facebook Live, and on YouTube. That'll start with Dave Dino Di Natale at 6.50 p.m. So make sure you tune into that. Definitely going to be a good game tonight between Hudson and Wadsworth. There is no 5 p.m. show today or 6 p.m. show today because of U.S. Open Golf Round 2. So this is it for me. This is your 3 News Now afternoon update, and I will see you back here on Monday with your next 3 News Now update. 
and WKYC 3 News will be back on the air at 7 p.m. tonight with Front Row. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Have an incredible weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday. Stay safe. Be well. I'm Stephanie Haney.